We lost one of the women of the night today, Miss Judy Tenuta, the love goddess. You'll remember her with her accordion and body little uh, quips. She she became a face on TV commercials and uh, a lot of voiceover work. But this special from HBO in 1987, Women of the Night, is where we first were introduced to her. Many people also to Ellen DeGeneres, also on there is Paula Poundstone and Rita Rudner. So four strong uh, female comedians from 35 years ago. So saddened you hear about Judy's passing. Thank you for the chuckles. I'm sure you'll be keeping it up wherever your new venue is. R.I.P. Judy Tenuta. <laughs> Next, HBO offers up some New Year's Eve last laughs as five fiery females find your funky funny bone on location, Women of the Night. Next. It's a pleasure to be your host this evening. You know, I, and even though I was second choice by HBO, it doesn't really bother me because, <laughs> no, it's true, because when you think of it, Frank Stallone is such a different type. <laughs> Tonight's show is Women of the Night. Women! Yeah. <laughs> it's the first HBO comedy special starring all female stand-up comedians, and I think that's very important because with the exception of just a handful of women, myself included, it's always been a difficult time and struggle for females in the world of comedy. Four of them, I say four of them, you'll be getting to know tonight. They are Paula Poundstone, Rita Rudner, Judy Tenuta, and this next young lady, Ellen DeGeneres. Mark!
Let's try that note one more time. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres, no! To hell with it! Oh! Yeah, this is wonderful. This is great. A lot of people ask me, because I'm a comedian, they always say, you know, is that a tough job to be a comedian? And I don't think it is. I, I compare it to things I used to do. I used to work part-time as a rapper in a department store. So you bought a little gift and you need to get it wrapped. Well, I came here to tell you about that. We got red ribbon, blue, green, and white. Everybody gonna have a packet tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. People always ask me, were you funny as a, as a child? And uh, no, I was an accountant. But um, <laughs> when I was a kid, my mother used to hum me to sleep every night. She'd stand there. Mm. <laughs> so aggravating. Yeah. My parents were extremely cruel to me. I remember one day I was coming home from kindergarten. Well, they told me it was kindergarten. Found out later I'd been working in a factory for two years. <laughs> I was about, I was about four or five years old. My dad walks up to me before Christmas one day and he says, Ellen, what would you like for Christmas? I said, gosh, dad, I'd like a little dolly. Christmas day, he wheels in this tremendous metal thing. <laughs> no, dad, that's not what I meant. That's, uh... You ever try to dress one of those things? They're impossible. It's just... We had fire drills around the house so that in case of a fire, we each had a special duty. Like my father had to grab the pets. My mother grabbed the jewelry. My brother ran out to get help. They told me to try to save the washer and dryer. <laughs> Good thing he had that dolly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was heavy. <laughs> That's why. But, uh... As a kid, I used to wander around in the woods, you know, because my parents had put me there. <laughs> Beautiful mountains. The mountains, are... that's the best part about it. I'm walking around by myself in the mountains one day. True story. Right down the hill from where I'm standing, about 10 feet away from me, a little family of deer. Just a little, just mother, father, baby, dear. I thought, oh, I wish I had a gun. <laughs> Could have gotten them all just right there, just so. <laughs> who are these people who actually shoot deer and then put their heads on their walls of their living rooms? It's a poor, innocent animal standing around thinking deer thoughts. You know, has no idea what's about to happen to... His last expression before being killed is on your wall. <laughs> guy's happy, he's proud of it. <laughs> Shot it. <laughs> I killed it. <laughs> you know, I could see if it was something that you hated. Something you're proud you killed, like a, like a burglar. <laughs> you think about this, this guy's gonna break into your home, steal your stereo, all of your canned goods, and have his last expression before you shot him. <laughs> Shot him. <laughs> I killed him. You ask the people why they have the deer heads on the wall, they always say, because it's such a beautiful animal. <laughs> there you go. You know, I think my mother's attractive, but I have photographs of her. <laughs> Wasn't mom pretty? She had great legs, too. They're in the next room. Come on. The deer heads, if you see the deer heads, usually on the walls of bars or restaurants, they have the silly party hats on them, silly sunglasses, streamers around their necks. These are the deer I really feel sorry for because obviously they were at a party having a good time. <laughs> I like animals. Dogs, I've, I've never had a dog. I really don't know much about dogs. They're a little stinky, I know that. My neighbor has a dog. It's a, uh, I really don't know. It's a big dog. It's a big, big muscular dog that breathes constantly and drools and jumps on me and I like that. I really, I'm gonna get one, I think. These little dogs I hate, these little chihuahuas, these little bug-eyed rat dogs. It's, 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 and they should be killed so breeding can occur no longer, I think. That's enough of them. So it's a little dog you see wearing sweaters, you know? 
You never see a big dog wearing a sweater. My neighbor's dog has a sweater, but he wears it just wrapped around his shoulders. So it uh, looks nice. It's very stylish. A stylish yuppie dog. And... Dogs hate when you blow in their face, you know that. Yeah. I'll tell you who really hates that, my grandmother. She hates it. Yeah. Which is odd, because when we're driving, she just loves to hang her head out the window. <laughs> now, this is true. I read this in the paper. If you have an Angora sweater and you want to wear it out that night to a party or something, you take the Angora sweater, put it in a plastic bag, put it in the freezer for an hour, it won't shed the rest of the night, which is true. But then I started thinking, well, my cat sheds an awful lot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. I do. I think everybody has a philosophical side to them. I, I, I grew up like that because of my grandmother. Because at a very young age, she told me, she said, Ellen, life is like a blender. You have so many different speeds. You have mix, blend, crush, shake, stir, puree, but you never use them all. And in life, we have so many different abilities, but we never use them all. And I'd say to her, I'd say, Grandma, then I just blow in her face. I just, uh... <laughs> I didn't like her. She's actually, she's a wonderful woman. I'm kidding around, because she's, and you know, the good thing about her is she takes care of herself, which is great. That's so important to do. She started walking five miles a day when she was 60. She's 97 today. We don't know where the hell she is. <laughs> Life is so precious. It's so special. Everything on this earth should be here for a reason, for a beneficial purpose. Everything in, in nature blends together, if you think about it, except for fleas. Please do nothing at all beneficial. I always thought at times like this when we can't figure it out for ourselves, wouldn't it be great if we could just pick up the phone and call up God and ask him these things? Just pick up the phone and call up God and... Yeah, hi, God. It's Ellen. Ellen. Degenerous. Degenerous. What, what's so funny? <laughs> no, I never thought of that. It does sound like that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Listen, if you weren't too busy, it... sure, I'll hold on. Somebody's at the gate. <laughs> Onward, Christian soldiers, marching. Yeah, now just sing along your tape. <laughs> it's not a tape. Well, they're good. <laughs> yeah. But listen, God, there are certain things on this earth I just don't understand why they're here. No, not Charo. No. <laughs> say what you mean but no there are certain things i mean jesus christ but no no i didn't mean that that was great we're still talking about that as a matter of fact i have a little plastic statue of him on my dashboard in my car no i'm not mexican it's just it's just on there i was thinking more about insects no bees are great the honey that's clever <laughs> i was thinking more about fleas they seem to have no beneficial reason No, I didn't realize how many people were employed by the flea collar industry. <laughs> Not to mention sprays. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> Being who you are. <laughs> yeah, still doing that comedy. Yeah. yeah. You got a little cold. God bless you. <laughs> bless yourself. <laughs> yeah, you got a joke for me. Great. Yeah, I got time. Yeah. Of course, you'd know that more than me, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a joke. Go ahead. Who's there? God who? Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. 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 Incredibly funny. <laughs> yeah. Another one, sure. Yeah. Who's there? God who? Got a dime. <laughs> time for another one no no i just remembered an appointment i have to get to so i gotta go how about that god who gotta go cute <laughs> stupid all righty <laughs> it's good talking to you too and i'll see you i'll talk to you later <laughs> bye bye keep calling mother
Isn't she something? Isn't she a little bit of terrific? Mark Shaman, give me a C, a bouncy C. Mark Shaman, you're quite a guy. I'd say you stand up but oh so high. You play piano and that's a good thing, but the tux doesn't work and that's not so good. Da 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 d d d or whatever the hell else you want to put in there. <laughs> you know, in the old days, they had a little thing that they used to call uh, vaudeville. <laughs> <laughs> And it was a place where the young could learn their credit. Whether it was the guy with the plates or the dog jumping through the hoop type thing. Today, the kids don't have a chance to fail. They don't have a chance to fall on their faces. Luckily, I mean, that's not the problem there that faces this next young lady uh, because she's got the talent and the pizzazz of a young Grace Moore. Please welcome Rita Rudner. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I should ask you a question, I guess, to start off with. Have you seen me on the David Letterman show, or do you have jobs? <laughs> I didn't start out as a comedian at all. I started out, I was a ballerina. I, I had to quit the ballet after I injured a groin muscle. It wasn't mine. <laughs> He's doing very well, though, really. He's a soprano with the Vienna Boys Choir. <laughs> well, I'm going home next week. Yes, it's kind of a family emergency. My parents are coming here. <laughs> There's really only one way to describe my mother. There's a very old saying. I don't know if you've heard it. Neurotics build castles in the air, and psychotics live in them. Yeah, well, my mother cleans them. <laughs> She's the worst cook ever, my mom. Really, even I knew you didn't put fabric softener in meatloaf. <laughs> she once made this rice. You can't undercook it. You can't overcook it. She lost it. <laughs> For years, whenever I went into a restaurant and saw a sign that said home-style cooking, I left. In school, when we traded lunches, I had to throw in an article of clothing. I hate cooking more than anything. When men ask me that awful question, when are you going to make me dinner? I say, any time you like, what kind of cold cereal interests you? Eating out is very expensive, though I was in one restaurant, they didn't even have prices on the menus. Just pictures of faces with different expressions of horror. <laughs> I did learn how to make one thing, though I did. I learned how to make popcorn. Well, I, I have to tell you why, because I don't like to go to the movies and pay $3 a bucket for popcorn. Popcorn costs 13 cents a silo. <laughs> I do work out a lot. I don't jog, though. I don't understand what motivates a jogger. I mean, what would make those marathons, what would make 17,000 people want, want to run 26 miles? All I could figure out was maybe there was a Hare Krishna on back of them going, excuse me, can I talk to you just a second? <laughs> and now that's not bad enough. Now they have the triathlons. I'm sure you've seen them where they try to kill themselves. They bike, and then they swim, and then they run. Why? <laughs> Why? Either these people don't have jobs, 
or they have jobs that are incredibly difficult to get to. <laughs> There's a woman who swam around Manhattan and someone asked her why she did it and she said because no one had ever done it before. Well, she didn't have to do that. If she wanted to do something no one had ever done before, all she really had to do was vacuum my apartment. <laughs> Now, gymnastics, that looks like a great sport. That looks like lots of fun. It really does. But you have to learn that when you're young, you know? I don't know. If someone were to try to teach me now to do a backwards flip on a board an inch and a half wide, um, I would say, look, why don't I just stand here and you could beat me with a stick? I diet, I exercise, I still don't look anything like those women in Playboy, though. I just, I think they get there from other planets. I hope so, because I don't want them here. <laughs> this one girl I saw, she was, she was amazing, and I don't think she had silicone, either. I think she had helium. <laughs> she was so big, I couldn't keep the magazine closed. And used to look at those pictures for hours. I'd say, do you think she's pretty? He'd say, no. And I hooked him up to a lie detector once he shorted out Chicago. <laughs> he used to say, I read Playboy for the articles. Yeah, I said, yes, I know. I, I go to department stores for the escalators. <laughs> I do love to shop, I admit it. I rationalize shop, I buy a dress because I need change for gum. <laughs> One time I love to shop is after a bad relationship. I don't know, I go and, I, you too, I go and I buy a new outfit and it makes me feel better. It just does. In fact, sometimes if I see a really great outfit, I'll break up with someone on purpose. <laughs> Once I saw a great outfit and, and I wasn't dating anyone. So I went up and, and hugged a stranger and slapped him and bought it. <laughs> Relationships, they don't last anymore. You know, when I meet a guy, the first question I ask myself is, is this the man I want my children to spend their weekends with? <laughs> my mom's always trying to figure out new ways to keep excitement in their marriage. It, not easy. She took up belly dancing once and she just wasn't real good at it. In order to make it appear like she was moving, my dad and I had to jiggle the furniture in back of her. <laughs> my cousin just got married for totally, totally the wrong reason. She married a man for money and she wasn't real subtle about it either. Instead of her fiance, she kept calling him her financee. <laughs> perfumes that smell like flowers to attract men. That's what I don't understand. Men don't like flowers. I've been wearing a great scent, though. It's called New Car Interior. <laughs> I just read men reach their sexual peak at 18. Did you know that? Yeah, women reach their sexual peak at 35. Did you get the feeling God is into practical jokes? <laughs> We're reaching our sexual peak right around the same time. They're discovering they have a favorite chair. <laughs> I do think about having children, though, I do, because time is running out, you know, and I know I want to have children while my parents are still young enough to take care of them. <laughs> My friends tell me stories, though. They scare me. One of my friends told me she was in labor for 36 hours. Yeah, I know I don't even want to do anything that feels good for 36 hours. <laughs> and another friend of mine, she's pregnant and her husband wants to have natural childbirth and she doesn't. So he's just been going to those classes by himself. <laughs> They're trying to put warning labels on liquor now that say caution alcohol can be dangerous to pregnant women. Did you read that? Yeah, I think that's ironic. If it wasn't for alcohol, most women wouldn't even be that way. <laughs> I 
My friends, they make such big deals over their children's birthday parties. It's so amazing. My friend just had a great big surprise party for her child. He's one. <laughs> we all snuck in around the crib. We jumped up, we all surprised. Well, he was surprised. He's in therapy. I had the worst birthday party ever, ever, ever when I was a child because my parents hired a pony to give rides. And, well, these ponies are never in good shape. But this one dropped dead. It just wasn't much fun after that. <laughs> One kid would sit on him and the rest of us would drag him around in a circle. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go because I'm in show business and I have so many exciting things to do now. Maybe I'll go to sleep. I, I don't know. I admit it. I love to sleep. Do you like it? Isn't it great? It's, it's the best of... Thank you. Applause for sleep. Thank you for that. Yeah. It really is the best of both worlds. You get to be alive and unconscious. <laughs> Once I went to sleep and I dreamt I had insomnia. It was just the strangest night, you know. I woke up and thought, now I can get some sleep. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Yeah, I thought like, oh, I'll call you back. <laughs> 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 Now, <laughs> here's a very shy and innocent petite little flower who is more famous than anyone who's ever lived, Judy Tanuta. <laughs> Hi, pigs. <laughs> you know, my name is Judy, and I have my own religion, Judaism. <laughs> yes, soon you will all be my personal love slaves. But first, but first, let's go back in time. You know, I'm trying to lead a normal life. So, just now, I was on this airplane to Europe. It can happen. <laughs> and uh, there's this guy sitting next to me. Looks like a squid in stretch pants. <laughs> so, you know, I'm ready to spawn. <laughs> pants is trying to make me talk to him yeah, just because he paid for my trip <laughs> how much can I give I ask you stud puppets so then he starts puffing on a cigar the size of God's ego and he's blowing this cigar smoke in my petite flower face and I said, excuse me, excuse me, but if I wanted to shorten my life, I'd date you. Okay, Sasquatch? So, of course, he takes this as a come on. Oh, and he says to me, he says, Judy, says Judy, says Judy. He had an accordion, too. <laughs> yes, yes, it could happen. It could happen. And he said, oh, Judy, Judy. Yes.
Yes, he wanted to possess me. He said... <laughs> he said, oh, Judy, come with me to Japan. You can be my little geisha girl. I said, all right. Like I have time to get my feet bound. <laughs> card come closer to the goddess come closer now I want to ask you a question how many of you ever started dating someone because you were too lazy to commit suicide <laughs> You've devoted your whole lives to them, and then they say, well, uh, I need to see other people. <laughs> yeah, well, watch Donahue. <laughs> okay, sex ape. And, and I have this friend, Mary Beth Easy, and she's not really my friend, she's more like, a landmass with a perm. <laughs> and, no, but I mean it as a compliment. You know, um, so wait, one day she called me. You remember, she called me and she said, Judy, Judy, are you coming to my wedding? And I said, oh, yeah, right. You know, like, I have time to buy her a blender. <laughs> Just cause some pipe fitter is poaching her eggs. <laughs> yeah! Just cause some bus boy from Meals on Wheels found her F stop. <laughs> I have better things to do, like stay in bed and complain. <laughs> you know what that's like, don't you, Princess of Power? <laughs> Look at you, look at you, you're begging to be me. <laughs> yeah. By now I'm sure you can tell that I'm the kind of woman who sits by the phone and waits for some man to call. <laughs> <laughs> you stud puppet look at you with your legs open like there's almost any hope no, no. you cannot possess me no oh. now come closer to the goddess come closer oh. guess what i want to tell you a secret i want to tell you a secret guess what <laughs> I'm dating the Pope. <laughs> no, no, I'm just using them to get to God. <laughs> That's right, I love the Pope. He's a fashion plate. One time he called me. You remember he called me? Yes, and he said, Judy, Judy. He wanted to possess me. He said, oh, Judy, let's go hunting. And I love to hunt. Because I like to wear safety orange. <laughs> your velvet painting of Elvis <laughs> that cries? And I said, suffer, Pope. <laughs> he cannot possess, you know. Oh, so then, um, the Pope and I astral projected. <laughs> it happened. And we went to Texas, and I wrote this love song for the Pope. It's a country and western love song, and you could dance to this, case sponge I just want a cowboy to ride me home. I just want a cowboy who's rich and lives in a room. I just want a cowboy with gold-plated soap. Yeah, I just want a cowboy named John Paul the Pope. <laughs> no, I'm not done. I met him one day in the 
Krakow Saloon. It could happen. He left Sue to pick up from clear across the room. He said, hey, little Klotzky, you're supposed to kiss my ring. I said, if I want to see your bathtub, I'll learn how to sing. He'd be my main man, I'd be his blue nun. He'd teach me how to kiss the ground. I'd teach him how to duck from a gun. To whom I can confess. Yeah, I just want a cowboy in a long white silky dress. of reality. My mom, she made me babysit my brother Bosco. Bosco! Yes, he's like you, but with a human head. <laughs> no, I mean it as a turn-on, stud puppet. So, so, um, so one day my mom, my mom came home early and she says, hey, Judy, what's Bosco's severed arm? doing on the table and I said um bad paper cut <laughs> yeah. one day one day I was coming home from work it could happen and I noticed my house was gone I thought oh god it's my fault for leaving it out in the open <laughs> When I got closer, there were all these firemen. They looked at me with lust, like you. Yes. Yes. They looked at me with lust. And they said, Judy, Judy, your brother Bosco burnt down the house. I said, Bosco, why'd you torch the house? He goes, was laughing at me. I said, Bosco, it was laughing with you. My dad used to make hot dog soup. Yeah, he would boil the hot dogs and we get to drink the juice. <laughs> my dad, my dad. Wow, oh, on a guy just like my dad who worships plaid. A guy who hikes his boxer shorts up to his neck, sits in front of the TV set with a beer and cigarette. And when company comes, he says, <sighs> through the mail, makes lasagna with his feet, and takes great pride that his eyebrows meet. You guys, you know, you know I, I wanted to meet a sensitive guy, didn't I? Huh? Yes, like you, but with a pulse. So, I went into this punk rock bar, and this guy comes up to me, he's got a mohawk haircut, he goes, hey, wanna dance? I said, no, we've had enough rain squatting bull. He goes, hey, you shouldn't talk to me like that. When I make love, I turn into an animal. I said, oh, that's a step up. He says, come on, Judy, let's go out once. What do you say we...
we go out once and I said, well, um, to tell you the truth, I was looking for someone a little closer to the top of the food chain. <laughs> and then, you know what? You know what happened? He tried to kiss me. No, he cannot possess me. He tried to kiss me and he kissed like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> His head fell back 180 degrees. <laughs> And his tongue popped out. <laughs> like I'm supposed to give him communion. Thank you so much. You people mean nothing to me. Thank you. is someone who is very remarkable and it's difficult to express my admiration for her for words do not seem to suffice so i'm forced to go back to my first love to introduce her interpretive dance <laughs> It might have been a different, it might seem, if it had been choreographed by a Jerome Robbins. <laughs> The next girl is real funny. Damn funny, as they say in those off-Broadway plays. Her name is Miss Paula Poundstone. Thanks very much. How you doing? Great. I'm in a very fine mood myself. I just turned over a new leaf. I decided I'd like to take better control of my life and make sure that less things go wrong each day. So what I've been doing is sleeping up to 20 hours a day. <laughs> I figured that in four hours, even I couldn't screw up that many things. And of course, if I have to parallel park it all within that time, that really just leaves me with the one hour to kill. <laughs> I think that even I could do that. My car actually doesn't have power steering, so I can even lose weight while parking. <laughs> Does anybody here drive a car without power steering? Yeah. Isn't it hard to turn the wheel? Sometimes I'll be going to, like, a friend's house, and I accidentally go past. I just go, well, then forget it. I'll go another time. <laughs> Couldn't possibly turn the wheel and hang out. <laughs> Tired. I'm not a good driver, actually, and I know that I'm not a good driver. I don't need anyone else's help to know. People honk and yell at me. Do they think that they're helping? People honk at me, it makes me have to crash into their car. I don't want to, I have to. They honk, they go, lousy driver, I crash right into their car. I go, you were right. I had no idea till you pointed it out, but look there. Also, cops pick on me. Has anybody here ever been pulled over for attempted speeding? said, yeah, well, we knew what you were trying to do, and if you didn't have such a piece of shit car, you could have gotten away with it, too. <laughs> Sometimes I get pulled over on purpose because I get, I get lost, and I figure at least if I'm getting a ticket, I have time to ask how to get where I'm going. I have a disease with directions. And I ask people, I like get to the point of loss where I start to cry, and then really no one can explain anything. And I ask, and people say stuff like, go north. <laughs> Thank you, but I, I can't tell left from right without pretending to eat. I have no idea where north might be. Or else I give that big long list of directions. 
And, and I can't really do it that way either because I can only remember one thing at a time, maybe. They go, okay, you go right up here, I drive away while they're talking. <laughs> I go right up there while it's still fresh on my mind. And then I pull over and ask someone else. <laughs> my dad says that I have a, he says I have a sarcastic tone and he used to make him really mad. He'd go, young lady, I'm afraid I do not like that tone of voice. I go, dad, you're a big guy. There is nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> and he is a big guy. He's a big, huge guy. Only he's got those little teeny spindly dad legs. <laughs> and he has very severe arthritis in his knees and he doesn't understand why. He's an engineer. I think this is scary. I said, Dad, it's like a rock on toothpicks. Do a diagram, figure it out. <laughs> I think he got screwed when they went metric. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, nothing. <laughs> and now I'm not good with numbers, and therefore I have no money at all. But I, I put my clothes in the dry cleaners. I don't have enough money to get them out again. It's like they're in jail waiting on me to spring them. <laughs> I have to go in every so often and go, well, could I just see the pants? <laughs> I have no money. I don't even have a savings account because I don't know my mom's maiden name and apparently that's key to the whole thing right there. <laughs> I go in every few weeks and guess. Kind of a health food nut myself, thanks. To me, hostess is one of the four food groups. <laughs> Though even I don't eat Twinkies because they don't have a chocolate outer coating. <laughs> and so germs can get into the pores of the cake. <laughs> For me, it is not a health food without a chocolate outer coating. Pretty big into the health thing. I went to one of those weightlifting places. Have you done this? It's so disgusting. I went, I, everyone in the place is chained to one of those machines. You go in, they're all going, Hurr! Jeez, if you have to pick something up, anything, and it causes you to go, Hurr! put it down. <laughs> if I go to get out of bed and I make a noise, I go, ah, not enough rest, get back down there. <laughs> and I don't believe for a second that weightlifting is a sport. What they pick up a heavy thing and put it down again. To me, that's indecision. <laughs> I used to work at the International House of Pancakes. Thank you very much. <laughs> you set your goals and you go for them. It was a dream. I made it happen. <laughs> it was the worst job I ever had in my entire life. And I'll tell you something, when people would be rude to me, I would touch their eggs. <laughs> It's a true story. I just flip them over in the back with my hands a couple of times. They didn't know I felt better. It worked out. I didn't want to. I had to. It was a terrible job. People complained all the time about the service. And you know, we weren't slow. The floors were sticky. We were stuck in the back trying to get to the tables. We had to make little human chains to get those cakes out there. We did it. So, Mira, do I have the worst posture in the history of the world? I hope to eventually go all the way over and become an O. <laughs> I would like to go on Sesame Street and represent the letter O. <laughs> Little career girl. By the way, too, if you have huge fat thighs, what you want to do is kind of sit on your legs so you get the full spreading. <laughs> Actually, I am kind of a screwed up person. I admit that openly. My, my parents were very weird. My mom was one of those angry moms that gets mad at absolutely everything. One time when I was little, I knocked a Flintstones glass off the kitchen table. She said, well, damn it, we can't have nice things. <laughs> and now she does a weird thing. She calls me up to tell me things that my dad does that make her mad. Have your parents reached this phase? I, I don't even understand the things that make my mom mad. She'll say stuff like she'll call up and go, like my dad has a garden in the back, so she'll call up and go, comes in here that damn zucchini. <laughs> and I'm waiting for the next sentence. Because I'm thinking that can't possibly be it. No, no, no. Comes in with a zucchini and what? Hits you with it? Rubs it on the wall? Something. No, but that's actually what she's mad about. Comes in here with that damn zucchini. I try to seem upset just to be supportive. I go, ah! What does he come right in with a zucchini? 
bunch of them like that. Sits in there on that damn couch. Okay, now he's gone too far. What does he sit right on the actual car? Ah! And they did a really scary thing recently. They bought a Winnebago, um, which isn't that, that that means they could pull up in front of my house any day now and just live there. Well, I tell you what, they're not getting any water and they're not plugging anything in. I should have thought of that a long time ago. Does anybody else's mom have an avocado seed in the kitchen windowsill with the toothpicks in it? Now, what is that, witchcraft or something? I had no idea what this was for a long... I thought it was a model of my dad. Drowning. My mom said that she learned to swim. Somebody took her out in a boat and in the lake and threw her off the boat. That's how she learned to swim. I said, Mom, they weren't trying to teach you to swim. <laughs> Now, I was born in Alabama, but I only lived there for a month before I had already done everything there was to do. <laughs> Even as an infant, I was bored and crawled to the state line. <laughs> Last summer, I was in Atlanta for a week, and it nearly killed me. It was awful. I would be walking down the street, not bothering anybody at all, and guys would drive by in trucks and go, Come on, baby. <laughs> Does this usually work for them? <laughs> what, do the women there carry, like, big chains with metal hooks on the end, just kind of snag them trucks? As they go on by? Why, you romantic schemer, you. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's very... You know, they're so funny in, in North Carolina, too. They're very comfortable around bugs. Now, I am not afraid of them, but I don't want them on my body or in my house if I can avoid it. These guys were so comfortable. One, one day I was in the woods with a friend, and a big bug landed on my back. I mean, a big bug. I could feel it tugging on my shirt. <laughs> so I go, would you just knock that bug off? And she goes... Mm, nope, that's just a devil bug. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> it was like she looked at it first to see if it was the kind of bug that should go or stay. <laughs> Those different bugs there have different rights. I go, it's a bug. It's on my back. I would like it off. Thank you. Mm, nope, that's just a devil bug. It won't even hurt you. <laughs> it's got a dog in its mouth. <laughs> if you could just knock it off my back. Also, I get very nervous with, there's like a group of people in this cell, I don't, like the people in Tennessee last year that didn't want anybody to read books that suggested there was life before Bible stories. Remember them? Book burning in 1986. Did we learn nothing from Footloose? <laughs> we have to worry about anything other than that. Actually, I am not a, uh, I'm not a religious person. I, I don't believe in God. I, uh, well, I'm a devout atheist. I still go to church. I'm not a heathen. I go to an atheist church. We have crippled guys who stand up and testify that they were crippled, and they still are. <laughs> as now the, uh... <laughs> as, you drive, as you drive out of the airport in Eugene, Oregon, there's a big billboard that says the wages of sin are death. Guess that's their way of saying welcome to town. <laughs> I would imagine that the wages of sin are death. But by the time they take taxes out, it's just kind of a tired feeling, really. <laughs> well, listen, you guys, I think it's kind of near in time to go, I guess. I know. I gotta, I gotta go. I have to go create a life. <laughs> Isn't that one of those laughs from the teeth thing? <laughs> I think that that is. I do have to go. I have a tendency. Last, last night I did an hour and a half and I could have done longer, but the club I was in um, didn't have enough security and a lot of the audience got away. <laughs> you guys have been very, very nice. Thanks a lot.